Before we jump into example three, here's uh, essentially the train of thought that you follow for all variation problems, whether it's joint variation, uh, inverse, or direct. It's immaterial. The first thing you always want to do is list or label any unknowns. Uh, this will be especially important when we get to word problems or contextual-based problems where you're going to be required to figure out what exactly you're finding in the context of the question, and then perhaps write a sentence at the end saying that this is what you found. So you always want to label your unknowns right at the top. Then you want to write down the variation equation based on whether it's direct, uh, joint, or inverse. Nine times out of 10, you'll be given some uh, information with which you can find the constant of variation at that stage. And if you have, you can write your model down once you've come up with a constant. In some cases, however, you're going to be asked to find the model and then use the model to predict what some other future value is going to be. So that, that's why this last step is solved for the unknown if asked. So let's take a look at a couple of these uh, examples. In example three, we're asked to assume that y varies directly with x. So the relationship is going to be y equals a times x, where a is going to be some constant. So here, uh, this is actually one of the nicer questions in that the instructions are written out. We're asked to find the constant of variation and then write down what the model itself would be. So the first one is if x is equal to 5 and y equals 13, we start by writing our equation down. In this case, there is no uh, context given, so there's no need to identify or label our unknowns. In fact, we, we don't know what x represents. x could be uh, the number of calories you eat, and then y could be the number of ounces of weight you gain. We have no idea, so there's no context to be assigned here. We write down the variation equation, as is in step two, and then we populate it with the known values. So we know that y is equal to 13, a is the constant of variation, that's what we're looking for, and then x is 5. The first thing you want to do is always find the constant of variation. So we can solve for a by dividing both sides by 5. So a then turns into 13 over 5. And at this stage, the, the question is not over because the question was not asking for just the constant itself. We were asked to find the constant and then write the model as well. The model is the direct variation equation with the constant plugged in. So we know that y is equal to 13 over 5x. At this stage, this question is considered complete because we're not, uh, we're not being asked to solve for some unknown quantity. Uh, looking at number two, we're asked to determine what the constant in the model would be for if x is equal to 3 pi and then y is equal to negative 2. So because we know again that x and y vary directly, we can start with the equation y equals ax, populate the constants or the known uh, values, y we know is negative 2, x we know is 3 pi, a stays as it is because it's the constant of variation. We don't know it, that's what, exactly what we're trying to find. So to determine a, we can divide the 3 pi over to the other side, and that yields us with a equals negative 2 over 3 pi. We have so far found the constant of variation, but the problem is not over. We also have to write the model down. And the model is essentially the same exact equation we started with, with the value of a plugged in. So we get that y equals negative 2 over 3 pi x.